is a screencast that shows how to get started with the Pebble launcher. I'm doing this on Pebble for Mac, uh, but it should work pretty similarly on Windows, um, and so it shouldn't um, shouldn't change much of anything. Uh, there's a couple things that might look a little different, but other than that, it should be fairly similar. Um, so the first thing you need to do is start up the Pebble uh, launcher, and there's another video about how to get that s installed that you can watch. Um, on Mac, I go to Applications and double-click on here, and it will start up the launcher. So here's the launcher, and uh, let's just look at what's going on in the launcher. This is sort of an all-purpose launcher that lets you browse different um, different scripts, debug your scripts, um, get some information about Pebble, uh, set up things for an experiment, um, tweak things so that the display options are correct, and things like that. So the most uh, important part is this panel over here, which lets you browse different files. And um, there's a couple folders here that have a bunch of different um, a bunch of different Pebble scripts for either demonstration purposes or tutorial purposes or testing purposes, and these are pr all pre-made. And um, then there's another few files that log information and, or uh, save configuration information. So, um, and initially this will point to the folder within um, your documents directory. So here's the documents. It would be my documents maybe on Windows or documents on Windows. And there'll be a folder pebble exp.2.0. And so anything in here is local to your account. And any changes you make will be changed only here. And any um, data you collect will be saved here. So um, this will initially point there. And you can see all the folder names are the same. So uh, this allows you to navigate around. And let's first go to the demo folder. So um, because I had to um, make something that would work on both Windows and Mac, this doesn't work exactly like your interface does. So you click on it once to move it around. And uh, a second time will open up the window. And if you want to move back, this is, you go um, to the dot 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 means up one directory and a single dot means on the same directory so if you change something you can do a single dot and it will, and it will refresh uh, nothing changed here so you can't see anything so let's just start um, by looking if you scroll all the way down there's a, a script called version if we select that um, and then hit run selected test it opens up a new window and this runs a very simple Pebble script that's like an experiment, but all it does is spit out the version information and it knows the system, the time and day, the size of the window, um, the participant code I happen to be running, and default things like font. So um, I hit spacebar to get rid of that because it just it was just waiting for the spacebar at the end. So um, that's a s simple script. And there's a lot of different ones in here. And we'll look at some of them as we look at other functions here. So I said, um, you can see how it knew we were using participant four. There's an automatic counter here, and you can set it to anything. You can set it to 500. And if I run version again, it knows 500. This allows you to um, uh, keep track of your experiments um, by assigning a random code and having your experiments use that code. And now by default, when um, in the launcher, once you run a test with a subject, it will auto-increment this. It will add one to it so that you don't reuse them accidentally. So you just have to be aware of that um, and so that, you know, it, it's a safeguard, but maybe you don't want it to increment that way, so you may have to edit it. If you don't like that, you can, um, there's a way of, I guess it's, there's actually a way of turning it off, but you have to do it manually by editing the script file, so I'm not going to go into that right now. 
you can also hit this plus sign to increment by sort of more easily. Uh, but if you have a different coding system with words in it, like test one, you could use that too. There's nothing special about numbers. Now if I run this, you see how it uses participant code test one, but it doesn't know how to increment this, so it'll stay that way um, all the time. So if you don't like it auto numbering, you know, you could do, like I use, uh, I use X1706 to indicate a certain experiment. Um, and then I could do 01 to indicate subject one of that experiment. And you should make sure, this used to be a problem, I don't think it is a problem with this, that um, you hit enter to get rid of the red around that to make sure the system will register that code and have it internally. You could also specify things like an experimenter code. This doesn't actually get saved in into the data file, but there's logging files that you can access to see if you want to know, well, who was the experimenter who ran that? Which one of my RAs ran this? Um, for tests that have translation, you can specify the translation language here. And this is, an, and it will, and if, Normally, if the test doesn't have translation and you specify another language, it will default to English. There's some command line parameters you can sometimes do to override things, but those are pretty much handled by other functions in this. Um, and there's parameters which we'll look at later. Um, there's also driver options, and depending on the platform, there's different drivers. Um, OpenGL will be uh, one that uses hardware acceleration. Software might be um, a little slower sometimes, but if you're getting glitches or something on some weird monitor with some or some strange uh, video driver, you could try that. I think Windows has a few other driver options um, as well. Now, um, not any test can hard code inside it the size of the screen it wants. But all of the tests I have d designed for um, for the pedal battery don't do that. They let you specify outside. And so this will uh, try to find all possible screen resolutions it knows about and give you those options as a pull down. Um, and by default, it, it will use the current screen size. So if you don't touch this, it will just use the screen size that you have, and that's probably what you really want. But sometimes you want a special screen size, um, either very high resolution or very uh, or lower resolution to get higher uh, refresh speeds or something. So you can specify this. Um, there's also this VSync option, which with a Pebble 2.0 allows you to synchronize refresh to the sort of pro usually 60 hertz refresh of your monitor. And to see how that works, we can look at, um, under demo, we can look at tests. And we can look at test refresh. This is a little um, function that will try to refresh the screen. And here it does it 200 times. And times itself refreshing it to see what happens. So if I don't allow VSync, you can see it did 200 times in, uh, I don't know, a couple seconds maybe. And it's calculated, well, um, f it was 4.05 milliseconds per refresh. So that, that was actually about 800 milliseconds total, I guess. Um, and it shows the standard deviation. And here, here it is on a scale, every one of these, um, that the different times took uh, the scale isn't uh, recorded, but you know somewhere around here is four, and sometimes it took longer. This is probably about 16, um, which is the refresh rate of the monitor. But oftentimes it would refresh multiple times in a row at maybe one millisecond increments, which means it's um, refreshing, but you can't see it. It's refreshing faster than the, the monitor actually can um, see it. And so that's uh, usually okay for um, many tests that aren't 
don't require high precision and visual stimul stimulus presentation uh, because it, it means that it'll work on a wider variety of hardware and uh, but but um, when you're doing a presentation and you want very precise control you want your stimuli to be synchronized with the um, the refresh rate of the screen so you can have much more precise control um, so if you hit the vsync here and try to run the same thing you can see I don't know if it'll show up in this video but you can see a definite flicker here and <clears throat> now it says mean refresh is 16.61 which is uh, 60 Hertz it's that's what the uh, milliseconds per refresh would be it means it refreshed once every um, update of the screen and you can see that there's a little variability here uh, sometimes a little faster and sometimes a little slower within a small range but it's it's fairly regular and um, it looks like it never missed a refresh like it one of these refresh rates is never twice as large so all of this is probably just variance in recording not variance in the actual presentation okay so that's a that's what the vsync does generally uh, I would I um, keep it off by default because uh, especially on picky hardware or picky video it can um, make animation slow down and be sluggish uh, if you if you do it if you don't do it in the right way and so it's um, it's usually pretty foolproof to um, not have it on and but if you want the control you can use it I'm going to turn it off for now the other thing that you can do is you can force the window the pebble window to be full screen and this is um, an option that's off by default but when you're doing testing testing participants you usually want this on so they can't break out out of the task and go check their email or do something else so if we I guess we can run this test refresh again at full screen and you can see that you know you can't there's no window available it just looks like a blank screen and everything is controlled within here if for any reason you ever need to get out of this there's a you hit the control alt shift and then the backslash the thing above the return or enter key and I'll just do that now to exit out of that and it might um, come up with some error message that it crashed early for whatever reason but that's sort of an easy way to get out of it so those are some of the options for running in in this area to help you run an experiment um, this middle area is uh, what what I call an experiment chain designer and what I can do is actually all of these options will get saved into a config file so if you change them and hit save let's see I think that Uh, is waiting for an input received an abort key combo so we just have to hit that and then it'll close down now we can come back to this and um, I'm going to create a new chain so I'm gonna say let's see we'll delete chain this is this doesn't work exactly like I want it to but um, usually can by trying and and with trial and error get it to work in a in a reasonable way the one thing I caution here is don't add, don't use any spaces to name this this ends up in a file and it can um, screw up things a little bit if you try to use spaces so we could um, you want if you want to run an experiment that has multiple different scripts in a row or has a specific um, settings here the thing to do is make a chain um, and set those configurations to save into that file so I'm gonna just call this test1 and it's gonna call it test1.config these are gonna be actually saved 
over here within the config files. You can see it's already saved here, test one config, and it's just a text file that you could edit by hand if you wanted to. Um, and now I can um, add experiments um, to the list. So I could go back to version and I can put append and then I can maybe say I want to try uh, to look at the fonts script. I append that. And I'll save this again. And now um, instead of maybe I'll do a bar plot and as well. These are just demonstration scripts. So I'm going to save these. It's called test1. And then I should be able to bring this back up later by clicking down here. But it doesn't, it's not quite working. I think if I were to close this and open it again, I can bring that back up. And you can see this set of scripts is still there. If you see, I can save it with vsync on. If I were to open again and load test one, you can see vsync is on. It should bring back the same participant code I was using. This lets you have multiple participant codes, multiple experiments running at the same time. Now instead of saying run selected test, if I go to launch chain, this should launch in sequence all three of these. So um, here's that first one, then it launches this thing that just displays all the fonts available within Pebble. And there's a ton of them. And then oh, it quickly did this bar plot. And um, so this is a good way if you have maybe a personality scale that you want to implement. And then a, then a test afterwards, you can um, put them all together or a questionnaire afterwards and just launch them with one thing and there's no intervention after that that's needed. It'll launch them in sequence as long as each one individually will work. Um, let's see. The, the other thing you can do here is at least if you have um, donated to Pebble and have the uh, password, you can create a custom launcher. So this will take whatever is selected, whatever the te the experiment chain is selected. You hit this, it'll say, well, I made this custom launcher. If, now, if you go back over to the folder, Pebble 2.0, you see now this new icon, launch test one dot config dot app. And this is a little, this is, this is just, um, on each platform, it's done differently, but here's um, on on Mac, it's uh, some type of little scripting language that it builds these things for. So if I double click on this, it bypasses this launcher and creates a very simplified custom launcher. And this can be really handy if you have, uh, if there's a lot of things you can mess around with this in this program, but, um, you could, this is meant for even kind of turning it um, in front of a, in front of a client or a uh, subject, because there's not much that can go wrong here. So once you, s you start and you can enter the code here, and then it sort of walks them through this. And I could actually do a run in, un in uninterrupted where it will go through all of these in sequence, or you can just have them there's one big button that controls moving forward. It has basic information. If it's timed, it'll let you know how long it's been. But other than that, there's not, nothing that's in the main launcher. Um, th this let, allows you to, um, I guess, move through it like this, but you can, um, that's, that's more for debugging purposes, and we can uh, adapt that to, to make it so that it's sort of uh, even more foolproof. So now you, you could hit start and this version files there and 
now I hit next and the fonts comes up. And I hit next and the bar plot comes up. And done, and I'm done. Okay. All right, those are, let's see, some, some other details of the launcher. Uh, I'll show you a couple more things before I'll end this video. So anytime a script runs, it will print out information. Um, sometimes it's debugging information that you write um, within your script on your own. And other times it is error messages, like if the script will crash. So let's see if we can find, I'll look under demo again, and um, let's see if we run this. You can see down here, uh, actually two different files were created. This one is standard out, and it gets saved probably within here. It gets uh, created, and you can see it here. And this will just load it for you to look at more easily. And at the beginning um, of this script, it just prints out a few things, the screen size, um, the screen size it actually used, um, the driver name it's using, and some debugging messages. Uh, the error messages are much more detailed, and these um, just log a bunch of different things that the Pebble system does when it's starting up, where it's looking for information, and files, um, media, and, um, different, um, different library functions, and things like this, and this is the screen resolution it ran things at. And if there's a problem, a syntax error will appear here that will help you diagnose exactly where things went wrong. So these are important to help you both understand when errors happen and figure out how to fix them. Um, all right, so there's a couple other menus here. The This has a lot of um, different information, how to cite, how to donate to the Superior Ideas um, crowdsourcing project, which will get you the password. Um, to ha you can set the password here. Uh, there's nothing under file but quit. And um, this is an easy way to access the, uh, the manual as well. This will open up the manual as a PDF document. So that is, I guess, part one of the launcher uh, tutorial. I'm going to do another one where I show you more about using it for um, tests in the test battery.